Hi, this is Sue from the Mountain Canary Company. Ed's going to talk about how and why we carry guns in the backcountry. Go ahead, Ed. Hi, folks. Uh, sorry that we haven't been, if you've been following us for quite a while, you notice there's been a considerable pause in our business here with you. There's been some issues, some health issues, uh, broken bone, surgery. It kind of set us back a bit. It's, this, you know, this is very important to us to get started up again with you. In the process, I've thought about dozens of different things I want to talk to you about. But there's one that keeps popping up on the surface. is one of my least favorite ones. It's talking about how we carry a sidearm or gun of any sorts in the backcountry. There are many, many different negatives for doing that. <clears throat> one of them is if you're carrying the wrong kinds of holsters, they can, you can drop your gun. You can lose it which can be now picked up by anybody in the public. The other thing is, you're always going to have a chance of filling up your holsters with crud, uh, be it pine needles, dirt, whatever. And the other thing is um, the public issue. People that, what you see is, what they see is what persists. Well, rather, the expression is what is perceived is persisted. In other words, if they, if you have to stop to deal with somebody on a trail, there's all kinds of negative stuff going on anyway. And the first off, you're sitting up on an of an animal, you're talking down to them, there's a perception of lording over them. Now they look up and see your pack and a gun. Whoa, you're lording over them armed. So that's, a, that's not a good thing to have. So if your pistol is out of way, if you're carrying a sidearm and your pistol is out of sight, even better. If your pistol is out of sight, it's going to be clean. Now the problem is, I did this years ago, I carried a sidearm on my saddle, not on it, but in a saddlebag. Why? The only reason I carry a gun isn't to deal with rowdy people or dangerous animals. I carry a gun in case I have to put down one of my animals. Period. End of discussion. Most of those other conditions you can deal with in other ways. <clears throat> so the last thing you want to see in any of those situations is a gun in your hand. But I have to carry it to put an animal down. And there's no way I'm going to be able to reach down there and cut their throats. Let me tell you, I'm not going to be able to make it. First, the animal will not want you to do it. Second is, I don't want to do it. So let's move on. Now how I have dealt, dealt with for years, carrying a sidearm is simple. I started out carrying one in this holster. Did you see the snap? That snap came loose one day on me and I dropped the pistol off the trail into the brush and I didn't know it was gone till dark when I got into the trailer and I couldn't go back and find it. Very stressful night because that's a trail that was used by a lot of kids on motorbikes. Got up old dark 30, grabbed Marty, we scooted, scooted out there. I'll be darned. Within a half a mile looking down under the brush, there my pistol was. Whew, thank you, God. Okay, so that immediately told me I didn't like that, that idea. I changed that fallen off business by putting a buckle on it, which as you saw buck unbuckles quite easily, rapidly. <clears throat> That's how I solved that problem. But I solved the problem. I wasn't going to let it keep going. <clears throat> the pistols that you see guys a lot of times carry will be in a fast draw holster belt combination. A little bitty holster around a big old gun <clears throat> and that's just sucking up crud, dirt and it's usually held in place only with a little thong over a hammer. Good way to lose that gun. You don't want guns lost, period, believe me. You don't want to lose the cost of it, but worse than that, you don't want to have it fall into the wrong hands. I have a theory, the most dangerous people in the backcountry are Boy Scout groups and church groups. They seem to do the most damage around campgrounds. <clears throat> so, let's move on how I deal with this. So it's not, it's not rocket science. <clears throat> this is a fanny pack, holster. We have two of these. I got Sue's on today because Sue's is nice and clean and neat. Mine's all ripped, scratched and kind of nasty but still usable. <clears throat> so how this works is, and it's a, what they call a 5.11 <clears throat> this is a company. I bought it offline, 37 bucks, well money, well spent. <clears throat> now, <clears throat> if, you're in, if you're a person that thinks 
you have to get out your handgun quickly. This tab up here, one on both sides, if you go to, it's, it's a habit extras, just pull it. There's your handgun. And I'll explain that green gun in a minute. <coughs> so it goes back in there very simply. <coughs> in this we also keep a copy of Sue's driver's license and her concealed weapons permit. <coughs> These little pockets can hold extra ammunition if, if you think you're going to get in a gunfight. <clears throat> and these work out extremely well. The weapon is out of sight. It's clean. It's, a, it's not a problem. You can move it around. I carry all my stuff on the left side because I leave my pack string on the right. If you're carrying a holster on a belt on the right hand side, even up high tucked away, you're going to bang it with your elbow. You'll be banging that sucker with your elbow. <clears throat> and I tell you, after two, three days of banging that elbow, it stops being fun. So I'm going to carry this, a regular pistol like that. I'll carry it in a cross draw where it's up out of the way of everything. Believe it or not, you can do that. But again, I've got the other problems then. So this, this little sucker here have, uh, is really great. We really like them. Been using them for years. Why am I using a plastic gun? <clears throat> Why do I have a plastic gun? Well, this is YouTube. A lot of folks get really concerned if they see real guns. I don't need to take you over to the gun locker and show everybody what I got in it. None of their damn business. So I got a plastic gun. This is called a training gun. One of the things that works really well is if you build up a holster for it, you can wet the holster out and form it to it. So it's basically a mold and a training gun. <coughs> okay, now, um, I don't concern myself much with animals. I've been in all kinds of different experiences with different animals, rode into elk herds before. I've I had black bears standing next to the trail I've, and above me. I've had them tearing grubs and I've had them leaving over to Dodge, which is mostly I see them leaving Dodge. <clears throat> so, but there is that time in the West here where they've released a lot of wolves, and you're very you have a, you have a greater chance to have the wolves in camp with you at night, looking at your animals on a high line as something to eat. So the the difference between is going out. With a, with a sidearm trying to shoot a wolf that is now mix, going to mix it up with your horses or mules or using a shotgun. I have a single shot shotgun. As a forearm you can stock, you can take a screw off and it falls off. At that point you can break the gun and it'll come up and oh, you'll have three pieces. It'll fit in the box. Uh, eight, I think the barrel length is legally 18 and a half inches. That's another way to do it. Just carry it in, put it together, lean it against a, the proverbial tree, <laughs> and and uh, deal with it if you have to. A shotgun will make it much better, easy. It aims a whole lot better in the middle of the night than does a sidearm. I, I've had, it, had folks come out, tell me the experiences they've had with wolves out there in the brush, hollering and snapping of teeth, and, and they're sitting up all night. So that's the only time you're probably going to ever see. If you're going to take a, well, a grizzly bear, well, a grizzly bear charges you, chances are you're never going to get shot off. And so it's better in all these situations if they don't leave, you leave. But again, like what I carry is I carry a gun just big enough to put my animals down. This is like an, S, it's an L, LCR Ruger, which comes in 22 to 357. You decide your poison. I carry a 38P plus. And it's just enough to put the animal down. I don't want to do a half-assed job. If I got to do something terrible, look at that, then I'd do it. That's again the only reason we have these is to euthanize an animal. You know, in fact, um, you're probably safer walking around downtown Seattle or Portland than you are up in the woods with a, during a grizzly bear convention. You're probably a whole lot safer. So keep that in mind. Well, now that's about all I got for you today. Um, I thank you all very much for coming by. This is again 
Probably my least, least uh, look forward to piece, but I think it's necessary. Have any questions, get a hold of me. Again, the opinions on what you want to use or carry are yours, not mine. Uh, so, I thank you again very much for coming by and visiting with Sue and I. Sue? And with Sue and I. Um, okay, bye. And so, again, remember, ride as often as you can. Please, please, please ride safely. I'll see you again the next time.